Hello there, welcome to Hippie Happy Homeschooler. My name is Gina and I am hopping on here again today to go over my literature picks for my ninth grader. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dive right in. Um, I have just recently done a video on 11th grade picks and so if you haven't seen that one and you have high schoolers in 11th grade, hop on over to that video because I shared all of the things that we're doing this year for my juniors. So for my ninth grader, we again are doing the good and the beautiful as always. So she is in high school one and I showed you in the previous video the way that the layout for the good and the beautiful high school units work, but I'll just show quickly. Um, these units come with 10 different magazine style booklets and each booklet basically gets through half of the book. So for instance, uh, if this book starts, I think with just David, you would use this unit one and unit two likely go with this book. So it's about two booklets per book that they have the child reading. Um, and inside of these booklets are different art pictures for them to look at. There are sentence diagramming sections. There are vocab sections, spelling practice. They have insight journals that they have to spend time writing in a, like an, I usually, usually use a notebook uh, for the longer essays that are 300, 500 and above. I usually have my kids type those ones, those up. Uh, they also have parts of speech pages. Um, they always have in, included geography as well as some sort of an art piece that they are to draw. So for instance, this one is a leaf, as you can see. So that's, that's the booklets. There's 10 of them for each high school year. You can uh, use them any way you want, really. Um, I was watching a homeschooler, Munson Schoolhouse, if you follow her, she's an avid Good and the Beautiful um, user, and she was sharing that she bought all three of the different high school units, high school one, high school two, and high school three, and she grabbed a couple from each, you know, unit and used it that way. You can do it that way. That's the beauty of homeschool is you can, you know, the, the curriculum serves you. You don't serve the curriculum. So if that works better for you, you choose what books you wanna spend time on and those are the units you would use. We tend to pretty much stick with the way that they have it mapped out. Although depending on the child, I might tweak it a little bit. So um, for this year though, with my high schooler in ninth grade, she will be working through the Good and the Beautiful units. I don't know that I'm gonna have her do all 10 just because of her particular learning style. I just know what she needs and so I'm gonna map it out a little differently, but I will show you the books that go along that pair with High School One. It's um, Up From Slavery by Booker T. Washington. This is a absolutely beautiful read. For those of you moms that pre-read, um, this book you are going to love. It's so special and if you don't typically pre-read and you sometimes engage in some of the books that your kids are reading for their individual work, I highly recommend this. Um, it was a very, it was a very special read. Just David, uh, Into the Unknown, John Greenleaf Whittier, and then Patterns on the Wall. So. For my daughter, we're probably gonna focus on three out of the five books this year. And then I have added in some additional readers for her to walk through that I find to be incredibly important for her to have in her education. And then there's going to be a couple of books that we do together. So um, right now she's finishing up Trumpet of the Swan, which this is just, it's a sweet, read if you have never read it it's a fantastic family read aloud she loves this book so much we actually read it a couple of years ago as a family but she wanted to read it again because it's just it's heartwarming so she's just finishing this book up right now because she loves it i didn't necessarily assign it it just was a good read <laughs> she is working through little women and loves this 
um, I have her working through a memoria, a memoria press guide that pairs vocabulary and question, it poses questions for every couple of chapters just for reading comprehension because that's something that I'm working on with her this year. And um, so she's working through that guide in, in tandem with the book. Then she will also be reading Anne Frank. We're doing a World War II history study this year. And so this is one of the books that I'm gonna have her, her spend some time with. Um, I'm going to be doing Romeo and Juliet with her as our Shakespeare play together. Um, we always do about three Shakespeare, Shakespeare plays as a family in our morning time throughout the year. But then I also assign a play depending on the age level um, for my high schoolers. So for her, it's gonna be Romeo and Juliet this year and then she'll also have the three plays that we do as a family. For my juniors, they're doing uh, King Lear and Macbeth for their 11th grade year and then whatever we do as a family. So that's our Shakespeare for her. She will also be walking through Beowulf and then we will, I have some study guides that I use to sort of uh, bring it out a little bit more for her and we'll spend time together on that. The other book that I wanted to mention that I assigned her is called The Delusion. This book is unbelievable. It is part of a series. There are three books total. It addresses um, spiritual warfare. It is a, um, it's a high school level young adult reader. Um, I read it three years ago, back in 2020, I originally bought it for my, then they were in sixth grade, I believe, and I just didn't feel like it was right for them at the time. And so I read it myself and I, I thought, well, I'm gonna tuck this away for when they're a little bit older because some of the content is pretty serious. Um, it's not, it's not um, X-rated or anything like that. It's just that it deals with complicated subjects like um, spiritual warfare, um, suicide, uh, there was a teen pregnancy, and there's also just a lot of sort of, she comes up with a, a um, interesting way to explain possibly how people are afflicted by addiction, and um, it's, it almost reminded me somewhat of screw tape letters in some parts of it. It, so it addresses those sort of topics. And so I feel like because of that, it's more of a high school read. They can definitely handle it in high school. It's very appropriately written because she's a Christian author. But um, her name is Laura Gallier. And again, I read this in 2020 and I could not put it down. <laughs> it was so good. And I think I'm gonna pick it back up again. I read all three in, in that um, time period where we were all home and had nothing really else to do but read um, and so this year I'm assigning it to her and she is just captivated by it and it's very thought-provoking and um, it really will get your kids thinking about the fact that you know we are not um, just experiencing the things that we can see there's a spiritual realm and we very much need to be suited up in our armor um, Ephesians 6 so excellent, excellent read. I highly, highly recommend it. The other thing she's gonna be going through this year, she's uh, doing the Charlotte Mason volume one poetry, which is so beautiful. Um, and then I have her reading The Man Who Planted Trees. And obviously then she has some other science reads and historical reads that go along with our time period that we're studying right now. So uh, that is all I have for today for my ninth grader. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that it helped maybe shape um, some ideas up for you as you plan out your year for your ninth grader and gives you ideas. Um, just to remind you that, you know, the, as I said in the beginning, the curriculum serves you, you don't serve it. And there are many ways to utilize a curriculum for your family. Um, you can pull pieces from different places. Um, another thing that we are doing that I actually didn't include in this video, I forgot to bring the book down, but we use Fix-It Grammar as well. She's going through <clears throat> one of the guides and just every single day she's 
editing sentences and it's helping with parts of speech and um, it's just kind of driving home all of those grammar principles in a different way. Um, it's just breaking it up for her. So I think part of the key of a really beautiful education is a wide feast. Um, the brain doesn't get overtaxed and so you're, you're bringing in different things and that's why I love The Good and the Beautiful so much because they're integrating poetry and geography and vocab and spelling and diagramming sentences and reading a book and writing an essay. So it's, it's constantly moving through um, different, different things in the realm of language arts and it's not hyper-focusing on one specific thing that's gonna overtire the brain. So if she's diagramming sentences and she's just exhausted with that, <laughs> she can move on to some poetry and you know, brighten up a little bit. So anyways, that is how we do language arts in our home for my ninth grader this year. And join me back here in a couple of days and I will be sharing my sixth grader picks for language arts. Have a great day.